All right, this video is going to talk about how to describe the motion of an object that is, that is thrown straight up and then comes back down to the ground and then keeps going further below the ground. Okay, so this is a basic free fall application, one dimensional. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take a person here and this person is going to have a rock in their hand like this and they're going to throw that rock up in the air and it's going to come back to the ground. And I'm going to define my axis, my zero point, is right with the person's hand like this. Okay, So the person's here and has this rock. So we'll, let's, do it in, let's do it in blue so you can see it a little better. Has this rock and he decides he wants to throw a rock straight up in the air. So the rock's going to go like this. It's going to come all the way back down. And it's going to keep picking up speed as it goes down and it's going to go way down here, okay? Probably drew that too high, but that's fine. So I just want to emphasize that point. What we're going to do here is we're going to describe the, gra the graphs of motion, the kinematics graphs. So what do they look like? Well, let's make, this is our zero point right here, let's just say. And we're going to define an acceleration versus time, a velocity time, and we're going to define a position time. So I'm going to start here with my uh, acceleration time. Here's going to be my velocity time. And I'm going to have my position time here. Okay. So, what are these going to look like? Well, first of all, when I'm throwing this object in the air, okay, what is the acceleration of that object? Well, I have my acceleration time graph here. I have my velocity time graph here. And I have my position time graph here. Time. Time. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at here is the acceleration versus time. And the acceleration versus time, what is that going to look like? What do you think it's going to look like? Well, the minute the person lets it go, it's a constant acceleration of negative 9.8. So that graph's just going to be a straight line, just like that. Let me make it a little thinner so you can see it. So it's just going to be a straight line down like this. The velocity, what is that going to look like? Well, we're going to have some point here. The person is going to release this with a positive velocity, right? It's going to have a positive velocity up, right? Then it's going to have a, a velocity of zero at the top. Then on the way down, it's going to be symmetrical. And the whole time, the velocity is going to be growing at a linear rate down like this, OK? So when the person throws it, it has a velocity. Let's just say that it has a um, positive velocity here. Okay, then it's going to reach max height, and the velocity is going to be zero here. Then it's going to come back to his hand, and then it's going to keep going. Okay, it's going to keep going past the cliff. So if I drew a line like that, that line would look like this. Okay, and let's make that green just to match our explanation here. Okay, so person releases it with a positive velocity here. Okay, I can call that point A. If you want to see it, this is point A here. This is point A here. This is point B here. This is the max height, where it has zero speed, zero velocity here. This is point C, right when it's back to his hand. It's equal and opposite. You see the symmetry there? And then let's just pretend way down here, this is point D, even though it's not to scale here on the graph. It kept going, right, obviously past uh, what he uh, released it at. So it's going to keep gaining speed. So if we just looked at this part of the graph here, this is the symmetrical part here, right? So this was the symmetrical part here, OK, like this. So this area represents the positive displacement as it's going up. This area here represents the negative displacement as it's coming back down. So the total displacement would be zero at this point because the two areas add up to zero. But notice that it keeps dropping uh, past that point, right? Notice it keeps dropping all the way down to D or past D here. I drew D here, so should have drawn D down into here. Let's make D down into here. Sorry about that. There's D. There's the bottom. So all of this represented more negative displacement, so it's going to end up with some negative displacement down there. And if I told you that the height was, um, you know, 10 meters right here, well, 
probably more than that. Let's just say that the height was uh, 20 meters, just to make it a little more realistic. Say the height was 20 meters there. Um, this displacement at this point, the area of this graph, this negative displacement, uh, ultimately would equal uh, negative 20. So we'll get to that in a minute when we get to the displacement graph. But what would that displacement graph look like? Well, he's throwing it up, right? It's going up. It's definitely going up. It starts at zero right here, right? It's definitely going up to max height, right? But then as it comes back down to point C, it's right back to where it landed in his hand, right? And now it's going to keep going down, and it's probably going to just be way down here somewhere because it's gaining, it's gaining speed really fast if I did this graph accurately. So I would have an inverted parabola. It's going up, 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 max height. It's coming back down, back to where, it, where his, his hand was, and then it's going to keep going down like this. So, let me erase that. Didn't do a very good job drawing that, but it would look it would look like a continuous uh, parabola going down, something like that. There you go. That's a little better. So let's label the points here. So right when he releases it at his hand, he has a position of zero. It's going up to the max height. There's your position of B. It's coming back to his hand right here. That's the position C. And it's going to keep dropping all the way down to the bottom at D here. Okay. So again, we talked about this, that the area of this, the positive and the negative, cancel out to give you a position back of zero right here, right? We talked about that. But the position here is going to have a, a position of uh, negative 20. If we assume that that height went all the way up to here, let's just say it went up to there, whatever. Uh, that position would be negative 20 right there. So your y final would be uh, negative 20 meters. And that would also be the, the displacement too, right? It would be negative 20 because we started from zero. And so that means that the area of this portion has to be uh, negative 20 to give you that, okay? The whole time that we're dealing with this red portion here, by the way, I'll go back and label these at different points, A, B, C, and D. The whole time we're dealing with a constant acceleration here of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And... Um, People like to call us different things, okay? Uh, sometimes someone will say, as the rock's going up, if, if the speed is slowing down, they'll say that's decelerating. And then they'll, sometimes people will say that this is accelerating with a negative acceleration. That's okay to do, but it's really more accurate just to say the whole time, if you look at this graph, the acceleration is negative the whole time. So me personally, me personally, I always just like to say that you have a negative acceleration in this situation, negative 9.8. It's constant. It doesn't change. But if you really want to try to describe it in terms of speed, if the velocity is one way and the acceleration is the other, let's say the acceleration is down, then it's decelerating as it goes up, and then it's and then they're they're both pointing in the same direction on the way down. So you would say it's accelerating in a negative direction, but I think that's a little confusing. So I always like to say it's accelerating in a negative direction all the time, or the acceleration is just negative and constant at negative 9.8. Your velocity is changing at a constant rate here, and it's just a straight line, okay? And then you're dealing with a parabolic function here for your position, okay? And that's going to go up, max height, come back here, all the way down. Also, the pattern to look for here in these graphs, this is a constant, right? Well, what's the... Uh, what is the equation of a constant? Well, it's just t to the zero, right? Some constant times t to the zero. Well, what is the equation of a line here? Well, it's a function of t to the one, okay? What's the function of a parabola down here? Well, it's a function of t squared, right? So t squared. So you notice the pattern here? As we go up, we're decreasing a power of t, okay? And those of you who are in calculus-based physics, we're just taking the derivative, so each time we go up, we take the derivative, we drop a power, we drop a power. Each time we go down, we're integrating, and we add a power, we add a power. So you see the shape of these curves are always going to follow that decay as we take the derivative, uh, because it's going to lose a power each time as we differentiate the function with respect to time. Alright, that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.